Hey everybody, welcome back to The Build Show. I'm Steve Bazek, registered architect up here in Massachusetts. And on today's uh, video, we're gonna talk about just the, the fundamentals of wall framing. So I have a, a new house here under construction. You can see the rough framing here behind me. Um, and uh, we're gonna talk about the particulars. So break out my tape measure. I'm not pretending to be a carpenter here, but this is just my trusty pointer for the day. Let's at first talk about some of the just common pieces of framing. So down here, we have a bottom plate. We have our common stud. We have a king stud. The king stud, notice it's just a common stud, but basically the king stud aligns with the jack studs. The jack studs are basically what carries the header. The header is the piece that's up here that basically carries the floor frame above the window. So that's basically a small structural beam at every window and door opening, right? And uh, if you notice here, the framing members here are quite wide. We can frame walls in uh, America typically two by four, two by six, sometimes two by eight. I do a lot of very energy efficient homes, so I fall into that two by six, two by eight category very quite often. So you'll see here, two by eight frame, the spacing of the common joist. We don't have a, a big wall here, but you'll notice the common stud here, the next common is over here. This is just a, a cripple. Cripple basically picks up the slack between the header and the head plate of the window. But notice that this spacing here is a little wider than normal. So typically in America, we frame our framing members on 16 inches on center. We also have the opportunity to push them to 24 inches on center. A lot of times when I do these deeper members of two by eight, because of the added strength in those members, I push that spacing out to the 24 inches on center. Now, a lot of you might have heard the terms advanced framing, optimal value engineering, or OVE framing. Those are just simple terms that talk about how can I take a wall and take the wood out of the wall but still be structurally sound, right? Because right here we have an example of the three major parts of any wall system, right? We talked about the common stud or the framing. This is the stud cavity, which is where insulation will go, basically in there. And then the third part of any wall is the doors or windows. Now, commonly, we associate our value with the depth of the insulation in the cavity, right? So if I put an R30 bat in here, I would call it an R30 wall. But the reality is, is it's not quite an R30 wall because I have a number of framing members. You can see just in this small section, we have quite a bit of framing. And the R value of wood is roughly about 1.25 per inch. So in that seven inches, we're talking, you know, in the R9-ish range. A far cry from the R30, that's three times more in the cavity than the framing. And then over here in the windows, we can have an R value that ranges anywhere from, say, R3-ish up through about R8. We have a bunch of windows in here. We're going to talk about that in a later video about performance and windows. But, but understand the three major components of a wall system. Now, the other thing to understand is not only that these three components exist, but they exist in certain percentages, right? So the cavity, cavity plus or minus about 65% of the wall is, uh, is insulation. Windows, in an average house, you're probably somewhere in the 18 to 20, 22% range. And then framing is usually around 15% plus or minus. Now, the framing depends on, you know, the framers and how much wood do they put in, what type of framing, the location, coastal location, stiffness of the wall. There's a bunch of parameters that play a role in how much framing goes in the wall. But if you exercise advanced framing and value and optimal value engineering, you could probably get about a six to eight percent shift in cavity space versus framing space, or what I like to call the framing space as opaque area, right? So that we don't have insulation there. So again, cavity insulation, opaque area, window, 65, 15, and what does that leave me with? 20 left for the windows. So those are some very rough percentages. And, and the point here is not to get caught up in the math, but just to understand. When I call out an R21 wall, R30 wall as being insulated, 
I'm really calling center of cavity insulation depth an R value there. I'm not really talking about the whole wall R value, right? To continue on with the wall system here, understand a couple things. One, because this is on 24 inches on center, we have a double top plate up here, two two by eights. Now, the reason we have double top plates is because we have a 24 inch on center wall frame but we only have a 16 inch on center floor frame up here. So you'll notice that while this one perfectly aligns, there's an eight inch shift here in framing. That's the 24 inch versus the 16. And then the eight inch shift on the other direction. And then we catch back up here on the 48 inch dimension because the 24 inch spacing and the 16 inch spacing both fall on a four foot layout, right? So the double top plate plays a role there. The other thing that I like to do, there's a lot of discussion about how to insulate headers. Remember, cavity versus opaque area, window area. Well, the header has the potential to become a real big opaque area in a house. So we want to provide some insulation in there. A lot of architects, framers, builders, they'll sandwich rigid foam in there and um, create an a insulated header there. Sometimes they put the foam to the outside, sometimes they put it to the inside. What I typically do is I try and size all my headers to the same depth. In the case of this house, they're all nine and a half inches. Because I have seven and a quarter inches in wall width, I have the ability to do a single ply, double ply, triple, or quad ply header if I need to be. So I gain my strength in the number of plies of that LDL header. But in the, in the smaller openings, like this 32 inch opening, you notice that it leaves what I call a pocket. I call it a header pocket because that way there, it allows the insulator to insulate that pocket just as a shallow cavity. And the beauty of this is, is that not only does the insulator get to do it, but the insulator does it on his time when he's here doing the rest of the wall. So it really doesn't take the framer and put him into some crazy sequence with the insulator or forcing the framer to fuss around with rigid foam. The framer gets to do what he does on his time and then the insulator comes and does what he does on his time. So it makes for a, a pretty good effort there in, in coordination between the framer and insulator. The last part of the wall, let's talk about corners. Corners are infamous for becoming cold spots in the wall. This is a, a two stud corner or what's called a California corner. I don't quite understand where that came from. I guess California was the first ones to do it. But the thing to understand is we don't have your typical U-shaped channel out there that boxes in a cavity that we can't insulate. So this one here is basically this stud with a little uh, piece of wood here to catch the drywall. But understand that this cavity goes all the way back to that plane of the wall. So it allows for that full insulation in, inside the wall there. And uh, those California corners, again, enhance the wall and they provide an optimum insulation capacity to the wall system, as opposed to just having this closed off and letting you, that be a cold corner. Here you get to see it again on this side. That's an inside California corner. This is an outside California corner. So you'll see that as this corner turns, we don't have that pocketed stud here. We actually just carry this wall all the way out. So we get that full depth cavity all the way across here. And then as we turn the corner, it dumps down into that cavity there. So that's the basics on wall framing. We're gonna jump over to the drawing board. We're gonna talk about this a little bit more. I'll enhance some of these concepts there. So see you in a bit. Hey, welcome everybody back at the drafting table here.